Hello, we're back. How are we all? Um, those previous two vlogs were like a little bit pre-filmed, so I haven't done this in a while, but I'm excited. I feel like we've got a really exciting end of the month. We're doing wardrobe statistics today. Next video is gonna be a little pack with me for New York video, and I'll explain our little New York plans. And then the video after that, I think we're gonna do a vlog in New York. So let me know if you're up for that. It's exciting, just like fun things. Autumn has finally arrived. I think it's official. I think it's today. Today is the first day of autumn. Isn't that great? It's here, we're happy. The sun is shining. In the UK, we're having a little like mini last few days of summer, which is quite nice. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm doing like cashmere t-shirt instead of my jumper today. I wanted to do this video like in the wardrobe, but the light doesn't get around there till the end of the day. And like, it just makes me look all golemy and not alive. <laughs> so we're here in the bedroom, but it's fine because I've got my phone and we are gonna talk wardrobe statistics. So if you don't already know, if you're not kind of caught up, I keep a digital wardrobe. If you want more information on that, on the why, the how, just anything to do with a digital wardrobe, I answer it in this video. So I'll link that in the corner for you. That's the real like introduction to a digital wardrobe, why the hell you would want one, how I use it in my everyday and why I find it really helpful. Um, so definitely check that video out. That's the part one to this video, but the part two to this video is the fact that the app that I use, which is called Index, I used to use wearing, I moved over to Index. Just think it's more aesthetically pleasing as an app and I liked the little like additional add-ons in the app which we will talk through as we go. But they now do wardrobe analytics, which is very exciting. It's part of their insider program, so you do pay five pound a month for it. However, if you don't wanna pay the five pound a month, you can still use a lot of their sorting features, which will give you like an insight into analytics. So it's still a free app to use. You can upload as many things as you want on there. You can make outfits. You can do everything that you can do on all of the other apps for free. You can do on Index for free. It's just like, if you're really, if you're really wanting the nitty gritty, <laughs> you're like a hardcore user of the digital wardrobe, which I am, I was like, yeah, I am 100% signing up to that. And because I've signed up to it, I have access to extremely deep, analytics, analytics of my wardrobe that I have never had before. Um, it was really fun when they created this. I did get on a meeting with them and just like, talk. I was like, oh yeah, I like this or I like that. And we um, asked in the Substack chat as well, just for like people's insights, like what do you want in analytics? What do you not want in analytics? And honestly, they ticked off all of our all of our requests. <laughs> we were like, we want this, we want that. They are all included. This is really nerdy stuff. If you like the stats, you're going to love this. Are you type A? You're going to love this. Are you the oldest daughter in your family? You're going to love this. <laughs> so I thought today we'd do an overview of the last nine months because I've been using Index since January. So I've got nine months worth of data in there. And it's interesting. I think I'm going to kind of talk through each section and then how I apply that in my everyday life, my purchasing habits, that sort of thing. So you've basically got three different sections of analytics. So the homepage on index is your wardrobe. You can just like scroll through, you can see what you've got. I need to do a little bit more organizing, but I kind of organized mine so that it was a bit seasonal. So all of my summer stuff was on top, all my winter stuff was on the bottom. It is an insider feature, but you can press this little like arrow button and it means that you can move tiles around, which I really like. Um, I like being able to like organize it rather than it just being like new in or something like that. You can organize it however you want, however that is an insider feature. If not, it's just gonna go, you can have it from like new to old, most worn to least worn sort of sorting features like that. Um, but if you go to this little statistics tab in the corner, you have got your wardrobe analytics. So you've got three different sections. You've got one section for composition, one section for usage and then one section for investment that is all about like the money side of your wardrobe. I'm not gonna lie, I won't be sharing that online. <laughs> I won't be sharing that in this video that this is between me and my app. Do you know what I mean? Like this is between me and my app and I'm not sure. It's something I feel 100% going into online. <laughs> but just to give you an idea of that tab, it gives you the total value of your wardrobe. It gives you your spend by category. It gives you your average spend by category. It gives you your spend year by year. It gives you your spend month by month. So very interesting if you're getting into like the budgeting of your wardrobe. And for me, I look at that and I'm like, whoa, okay. Like it's one of those things that makes me go, well, Nelly, let's slow down here. <laughs> let's calm this down. Um, but a very interesting, deep, in-depth look. So you can be like, 
I spent X amount in this month in 2022. Do you know what I mean? Like they're really getting down to the nitty gritty, which is what I love about these analytics. They really, they're really not wishy-washy, like up here statistics. You really are getting actually helpful, helpful stats that can help you going forward. So let's kick off in the composition tab. I'll put the little charts here of everything that I'm looking at. So category, this is an interesting one and I'd be interested if any of you have a different top category than tops. I feel like tops is probably the most common number one category, but you never know, maybe you're a shoe person. Maybe shoes are your top category, maybe bags are your top category. I'm not surprised by any of this, like tops being my number one category, followed by bottoms, followed by shoes, followed by outerwear, those who are very close together, bags, one pieces, so that includes things like dungarees or dresses or jumpsuits, and then accessories. For me, that's like belts, um, scarves. I don't really, um, I don't have any jewelry on there. I don't have any swimwear on there, um, hence why they're zero. Um, so yeah, I'm not surprised by that one, but it is a good reminder. That maybe I've got enough tops, do you know what I mean? Like, 31% of my wardrobe is tops. I have plenty of tops. <laughs> so whereas wearing, that's really hard to say, do um, color by pie chart, they just have it, like a little strip here, which I think looks kind of chic. I'm happy with like either way. Um, there were a lot of uh, requests to do like a deeper dive into color. It's definitely something they're thinking about, but for me, who has quite like basic colors in their wardrobe, I'm not sure I need to go deeper than what is here. Um, a third of my wardrobe, exactly a third of my wardrobe, is black. <laughs> But I do think if I was to compare this to say this time last year, brown now makes up 19% of my wardrobe. That is huge, that is massive. I'm not sure I owned really much brown this time last year at all. I do really feel having my color analysis has really changed the game big time. And I'm really interested to do a winter season with that knowledge in my head and to see, because I feel like in winter I just would be like, I just wear black all the time. I wear black head to toe, I wear, lots of black accessories, I wear black boots, I wear black coats, I wear black bags. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see what winter is like. Now I have the knowledge that maybe black isn't the best color for me. I do find myself gravitating towards it less and working with it a bit more rather than just being like, oh, I'm head to toe black. Like I definitely feel a bit more experimental with <laughs> colors in my wardrobe. Um, beige is 13%, white is 10%, blue is 10%, that's obviously gonna be denim. Kind of this like goldy khaki color is 6%, 5% gray, and then 1% for green silver. I'm really not sure what silver in my wardrobe. Um, and then yellow and red. Red for me, I was like, what is red? What is red in my wardrobe? It's my pair of a piece apart cord trousers. <laughs> they make up for 1%. So that's interesting, 0% purple, pink, and orange as to be expected. The new versus secondhand statistic is interesting because things that are new in my wardrobe make up 88% of it and 12% is secondhand. And previously I know that on wearing, I think that stat got up to more like 18%, but it's back down to 12% and I think that's because this year I've, I've been trying to buy less. I have definitely, certainly failed at that in the last like three or so months. Um, but I did find that buying secondhand things is tricky because if you're buying vintage, you can't always return. Um, so I felt like I was buying things that's on like Depop and like things that I was buying online. I then like couldn't return. So I was having a lot of things in my wardrobe. That I was like, oh, it doesn't really fit or I don't actually really, really love that. And I would return it. And I've been trying to do like less returning and like back and forth this year. Hence why there is less secondhand. But it does make me want to buy more secondhand in person. So like whenever Curate and Rotate is doing a pop-up to go or like whenever I see a pop-up in Brighton or London or I'm traveling and I wanna do some secondhand thrifting in person. Um, so it makes me wanna do that more because I feel like buying secondhand things online for me, sometimes I get a little bit impulsive because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's gonna go. We've all done it, right? So I think there's a way to get that statistic back up and I think it's a little bit more in person and also a little bit more not being so like, trigger happy when I see something that I like online. The season statistic is a new one to me. I don't think any other apps that I'd used previously had this. And I basically went through and categorized every single thing in my wardrobe and like gave them the appropriate seasonal tags. I will say that's one thing with this statistics dashboard. The more you put into it, the more you get out. So if you are new to index or you're in the process of uploading your wardrobe or you have already uploaded your wardrobe, I would be going in and I would be adding tags I would be adding price, I would be adding date purchased and whether it's new or secondhand. So now when I'm adding things, I'm adding those things in every time and building it as I go. Um, because obviously without that data 
it's not going to have this statistic. It will just be like undefined. Um, so I went in and redid all of that, which is like a bit of a faff, but I also, I kind of wanted to know. And actually it is interesting. I'm not surprised that fall slash autumn makes up 27%. That is the biggest piece of the pie. Of course, of course it is. Like autumn is my favorite. Like I feel, I feel like any fashion girly here is being like, autumn is my favorite. We're all very, very excited. <laughs> I don't really count myself as a fashion girly, but you know what I'm saying. I feel like everyone is collectively excited that autumn is here. Um, I'm kind of not surprised that winter and summer make up the smaller percentages. Although actually, I, yeah, I've just realized spring is the same as autumn. That for me, again, autumn and spring are similar. They're shoulder seasons. They're like t-shirt and trench seasons. Do you know what I mean? AKA the best. So it, it, it does make sense to me that those two are the most and then summer and winter are the least. And also something that I can wear in summer, I might not necessarily be able to wear the rest of the year and vice versa with winter. So my clothes that are in autumn and spring tend to be more versatile throughout the year, I guess. Okay, this statistic is kind of disgusting. <laughs> it is one I'm like, do I have to share this online? I do, I do. I feel like I have to be open about this. The longevity of things in your wardrobe. So this is why I would be adding purchase date to things. If you don't remember the exact date and you're just like, I think I got this autumn 2018, that's fine. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes I didn't know the exact date, but for me, I buy lots of stuff online. So I was able to use my receipts and like emails to kind of work out when I had got things. This is so bad, 48%, that is almost half of my wardrobe <laughs> has been added in the last year or under. Now I do know that last, this period last year, I went a bit wild, I went a bit crazy. Um, adding things to my wardrobe. So this makes sense to me. It's not particularly shocking to me. Oh, it just makes me feel like, okay, right. I just need to, I need to chill out. I'm actually really happy with what I have in my wardrobe at the moment. Let's just take a moment, <laughs> take a moment and rest because there is plenty in there. Um, so yeah, that does make me feel a bit gross. And that 38% are in the last two years with 7% in the last three to five years and 8% in the last over five years. So there is 10% that's been in there for over five years, but oh, I don't know, it's a, it's a really, really tricky one, this. I talk about it a lot on Substack and I do get a lot of comments from people being like, you're really hard on yourself because I think that having Ralph just changed so many things, changed everything and massively changed my style. Like I don't hugely relate to my style pre-Ralph now. There are certain like formulas I would still wear and ultimately things are always, cha we're always changing, we're always evolving. Um, but I do look back and I'm like, there are so many things I just wouldn't wear now. And also my life now compared to what it was pre-having a child is very different. It's a lot more chilled, it's a lot more relaxed, it's a lot less like London events, lots of travel. Um, so I needed new things. <laughs> but did I need 50% of my wardrobe to be new things? Probably not. A good, a good slap on the wrist statistic and we all need those every now and again, right? <laughs> I'm gonna look at these next two statistics together. So we've got items added and then items sold slash donated. I've only recently worked out how to do the donated thing. So previously, whenever I sold something or passed something on to a friend, I was just deleting it. But if you go into that item and then there's like a purchase date, there's also like a item sold donated date. So I would just like add the date as today and it actually automatically removes it from your wardrobe and then the statistic gets added to this analytics dashboard. So just a note, if you are also an index user. So although it says that I've donated five things in the last month and eight things like over the last year, it's actually more than that because yeah, I just didn't, I just wasn't doing it. I just wasn't doing it correctly. Um, but it does say that 15 things have been added in the last month. <laughs> and 88 things have been added in the last year. Uh, yes, this is huge. Considering I was like, I'm going to only buy one thing per month this year, and I've added 15 things in the last month. How does that work out? It's tricky. My wardrobe is not a classic wardrobe in the sense that because of the job that I do, there's a bit more in and outness. There's a bit more changing around of things. I really try when I work with brands to either use things I already own or combine new things that I already own. But obviously when you work with brands, they want you to use new in in stock items. Like I get it, it makes sense. So there definitely tends to be new things added more often than a classic wardrobe. And also things are gifted. I am quite strong with gifting these days and saying no to things 
that I wouldn't buy myself. I'd like, as we, as we have realized, I do not need more new things in my wardrobe. But occasionally there are things for jobs, there are brands that I wanna support. So new things ultimately do get added. I'd say 15 things in the last month is quite big. I did do a job with Net-a-Porter where I like purchased some new things to show in a post. I think that added like five new things into my wardrobe. So you can, or you can see how these things like top up. Um, I'd say yours probably doesn't necessarily look like this, but I do need to get better at doing the items sold donated because I think that will like, make this statistic feel a little bit more digestible. I love this one. And this is one that we spoke about when we had our meeting and we discussed, and I was like, I think this is a really good idea of your most versatile items and your least versatile items. So this isn't necessarily items that you have worn, but it is items that are most commonly included in outfits that you've saved. So that's whether you've worn them or you've created them on the app and you just save them for wearing at a future date. Um, I think this is a really, really clever statistic. And although it does look quite similar to my most worn items, there are a few different changes in there. So let's just have like a little scroll through. So my most versatile item of all are my Aviana flip-flops in 58 outfits. I feel like that's not surprising. I wear them all the time. <laughs> people are so bored of them. People are like, oh my gosh, Anna, please stop with the flip-flops. Stop trying to make the Aviana flip-flops happen, but they are so comfortable. And I feel like I haven't worn them as much in recent months, but at the beginning of the summer, I lived in them. This Arquette jumper is a men's jumper. It's from a couple of years ago now. It's in 39 outfits. I almost lost it the other day. It dropped off of the buggy and someone ran and gave it back to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much because I would have been gutted to have lost that. My Sir kind of big sandals in 39 outfits. My Arquette loafers in 38 outfits. My Cezanne bag in 38. My St. Agni bag in 36. Dragon Diffusion in 35. St. Agni in 30. Um, my Uniqlo jumper in 30 outfits and my Goldie um, low slung jeans in 27. I mean, you can keep scrolling, right? You can just keep going. And I also love, if you scroll back to the front, you can do it just for tops, you can do it just for bottoms, for outerwear, for one pieces, bags, shoes, accessories, the whole shebang. I love that there's that breakdown. You can get so granular with it. I feel like this is an interesting one because it just makes you think, what am I wearing the most? Like, what are good purchases for me? And I can see that what are good purchases for me are cashmere crew neck jumpers. <laughs> no surprise. What's not such a great purchase for me is more kind of occasion wary tops, I would say. Um, and in general, uh, yeah, just more occasion wear pieces, pieces that I'm not wearing all that often, I guess. Or to be fair, a lot of these things are just new in my wardrobe and I haven't got around to wearing them yet. Um, but I love this statistic. This is one that we were like, oh, we kind of debated for a bit, but I'm really pleased that it was included because I think this is a really interesting one. And I, like I said, I haven't really seen this anywhere else. So that's the composition tab done. Now into usage. And this one for me is huge, utilization, because this previously was on the wearing app. I haven't been on the wearing app for a while, so they might have updated things, I don't know. But there was just like a number, there was just a percentage there, but it didn't really say what the percentage meant. <laughs> what was the breakdown of that percentage? And I was like, I wanna know, like, is this, it was like a utilization of your wardrobe. And it was like, you've utilized 83% of your wardrobe. My guess would be that it was wearing things once in a year for the statistic. But I love that on here, we've got in the last month, in the last three months, in the last six months, and in the last year. So you can see it's basically how often you've worn that one piece of clothing. How index work it out is it is items that were logged onto your calendar at least once in the defined period divided by the total number of items in your wardrobe. I love it. I love that they've given like, they've given what is the statistic for each one. Um, so in the last month, I've utilized 32% of my wardrobe. In the last three months, 54%. In the last six months, 73%. In the last year, 83%. I'm pretty happy with this. And it makes sense. Like in the last, you're not going to be able to utilize 100% of your wardrobe in a month, in three months. So it kind of makes sense that, yeah, like those statistics make sense to me that I'm like, oh, right, okay, I'm utilizing like the majority of my wardrobe for the specified seasons, if that makes sense. So 83% for the last year, room for improvement. I am pretty happy with that. Okay, this is an interesting one because this is most worn items, least worn items. So this is like, what have you actually logged into your calendar? So basically every day or every couple of days, I'll go in and I'll log my outfit for each day. And that like registers it as a wear, if you know what I mean. It's like, I have worn this outfit. But what I love about this is you've got most worn items all, or you can go down like your most worn items in the last month, last three months, last six months, last year, or all. 
Um, and I also love that you can break it down into my most worn tops in the last three months, my most worn bottoms in the last six months. Like, again, you can get really granular with it, which I love. Like, we're here. We're here for the granular detail. Of course, it just makes sense that my Lovo puzzle bag is my most worn. <laughs> I'll scroll through them now. Uh, like my Goldie jeans, my Addison's belt, my St. Agni bag, my Lululemon um, leggings. I actually only have one pair of Lululemon leggings. Why is that so hard to say? registered into index but I have different colors so I have like a brown I have a navy I have a black but on a Friday I tend to be wearing leggings sometimes I'll work out in the morning and I'll just leave them on for the whole day so they get registered a lot in here um again a goldie jeans I mean there'll just be no surprises here you'll be like yes Anna we see you wear these things all the time and then in terms of my least worn items these are just things that are new to my wardrobe mostly or occasion wear pieces that I like obviously don't wear all that often. There's not actually that many things I haven't worn at all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 things and most of those things are things that are new. So I'm pretty chuffed with that. I'm gonna need to move you over here because I'm slowly, <laughs> I'm slowly just boiling, <laughs> melting in the sun. It's hot today. What is going on? So the next section goes into usage per category. So like your number of wears of your total wardrobe and it also gives you like shoes, bag, bottoms, outerwear, tops, accessories, one pieces. So my average number of wears of a piece for my total wardrobe, like any piece of my wardrobe is 14, but my most number of wears out of a category is with shoes. So I get most wear out of my shoes, least wear out of my dresses. Again, that makes sense. And I also get a lot of wear out of my bags as well. So my bags and shoes are like my best purchases in terms of I get the most wear out of them. And I guess that makes sense because I have less of those than I do other categories in my wardrobe. But ultimately I'm wearing shoes every day. I don't necessarily wear a bag every day. I guess that's why it's like secondary to shoes. That makes sense. But a good couple of times a week I'm wearing a bag. So I love that. I love that my average total wear is 14 but shoes and bags and bottoms are above that. I get most wear out of those. So shoes, bags and bottoms tend to be better buyers for me in terms of number of wears. Then we've also got cost per wear. This is kind of crazy. <laughs> the cost per wear of any item in my wardrobe, like the average is 61 pound per wear, <laughs> which is wild. Um, but that is pushed up by things like one pieces. So things like dresses, occasion wear dresses that for me tend to be quite pricey, but ultimately things that I don't wear all that often. And same with bags. There's going to be like crazy bags in there that were quite expensive. I'm thinking of my Loewe puzzle hobo bag, not the puzzle, the normal one, the hobo bag. I don't wear that one as often. That is going to shoot that price up. Interestingly, shoes and bottoms are at the top of that list. So average cost per wear of shoes is £26. Average cost per wear of bottoms is £35. And that is because I wear my, like I, we can see, I wear my shoes all the time. Bottoms are things like jeans. I wear a lot. Like most days I'm wearing some kind of pair of a Goldie jeans. So I'm not surprised that they are down the bottom of the list. This is definitely skewed higher. <laughs> the things I buy tend to be more high end, high street or like lower mid price designer. So this does make sense. But again, it's something that I want to get down. I'm like, I would love to get that average cost per wear. <laughs> down. The next statistic to look at is number of wears per color. And you can look at cost per wear per color too. So number of wears, I like looked at this and I was like 23 wears for my red items. I was like, what is that? And I looked and it was the burgundy piece apart um, cord trousers. And I was like, oh, I've worn them 23 times. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. <laughs> it's interesting that my number of wears isn't the highest for black. You'd think that I have the most black pieces in my wardrobe, therefore my number of wears would be also the highest. Um, but it's kind of interesting. It's interesting that black is a little bit further down that list, brown's a little bit further down that list, but to have red so high, I was like, that is interesting. This whole number of wears slash cost per wear thing is also broken down into new versus secondhand. So my number of wears for a new item in my wardrobe tends to be on average 14, on a secondhand piece 10. Cost per wear for a new piece tends to be 58. Cost per wear for a secondhand piece is 83. That surprised me that it was that way around because I'd say that my secondhand items are generally lower priced, but I tend to buy more secondhand handbags, which do tend to be higher priced. Hmm, food for thought on this one. But again, we, we love the detail. <laughs> And then the final bit on this usage tab is most worn outfits and least worn outfits. I feel like this 
would work really well if you're like a serial outfit repeater, which I kind of am, but there's always a tweak. It's like a different shoe, a different bag. I've added a belt. So actually there's only one thing here that I've worn two times because so often I will also go in and I tend to make the outfit from scratch every time. So actually this is a statistic that doesn't really apply to me because I'm not really like scrolling through my outfits and like picking on one that I've already worn. I'll just like make a new one. Um, but say you did do that, this would be a really helpful statistic for you. Then we have the investment tab, which as I've already discussed, <laughs> I think that was between me and my index app. Um, but again, very helpful if you're looking at budgeting and a real pro of the app really to like get down into the nitty gritty of your wardrobe. Like to me, if you're interested in that kind of thing, like this is the way to do it, the only way to do it. And by far the easiest way to do it, which is good. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed that little wardrobe audit with me. Was it little? Not really. I've been filming for over half an hour. <laughs> there's a lot to say and there's a lot to fit in. And I think for me, how I use this going forward is in terms of impulse moments being like, oh my gosh, I need that. Oh, my wardrobe is missing that, my wardrobe, it's not. <laughs> it's really, it's not. I am very well catered for in very many departments and I would love to get my cost per wear down, my utilization up and just generally, yeah, like use what I have, stop the flow of things coming in as much. And I wouldn't even say it's a need to donate or sell because I'm really happy with what I've got. I've realized I, I didn't actually tell you how many items I've got in my wardrobe. <laughs> it's 173. I always say 160 is like my happy place. I've realized through doing this over the years. I'd say 173, I'm starting to get to the point where I feel quite overwhelmed with what I have. So I definitely feel the need to close the border. She says, I've got a Donnie parcel, but it's due to arrive on my birthday. So I'm like, nah, <laughs> a little birthday treat. Um, but yes, very helpful information. I would love to hear how you feel about digital wardrobe. I feel like on Substack, we talk about it a lot. It comes up in the chat a lot. There are people who are like super users of Index and other wardrobe apps on there. And we're always, we're talking, we're discussing, we love the numbers. Um, so come and join us if you like that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. And next week we'll be packing for a very exciting New York trip. And the week after that will be the video of it. So lots of exciting things to come. I will see you then. Have a great week. Bye.